So the next topic is cumulative frequency diagrams. And actually, you should be pretty familiar with these from GCSE. So I'm only going to do one example on this. So these types of graphs, they're intended to show the running total, which is the cumulative frequency. So they show you the running total of people or things up to a particular value. And they're particularly useful in estimating the median and quartile. So if you have one of these diagrams, you don't actually need to do linear interpolation because um, it's the same kind of thing. So I've got a table here with some different values. Um, it looks like it's about measuring some kind of time that something took. And we've got the true class limits here and we've been given their frequencies. So unsurprisingly, to do a cumulative frequency diagram, we're going to have to work out the cumulative frequencies. So that's going to go one, add on the four to get five, add on the 10 to get 15 and add on the 17 to get 32. Now, when you plot these, you should remember from GCSE that you're going to be plotting the upper boundaries with these bits here, because we're saying how many people or how many things have gone up to that top value. So um, we're going to start at 9.6 because that's the lower boundary. So I'll put across there and then we're going to do 9.7 with one. So that's going to be sort of halfway up at this point here. We're then going to do 9.9 .9 with 5. So here's my 9.9 .9 going to go with 5 like this. And then 10.05 is going to go with 15. So 10.05 here is going to go with 15. And then I've got 70, um, 32 going with 10.2. So here is my 32 going with 10.2. Now, when you did these at GCSE, you probably drew them with like a smooth line. But because we presume that everything has got an equal distribution here, we're actually going to join ours together using a straight line. OK, um, it shouldn't make too much of a difference, but we are presuming that everything is equally distributed, meaning that the line would be straight rather than a curved line like this. So we've drawn the cumulative frequency diagram. And the next thing we're going to do is we're going to have a look through these questions that we've got down here. So we want to estimate the quartiles and the interquartile range. Well, we can clearly see that there are 32 things here. So we're going to say that the lower quartile would be obviously 32 divided by 4. So it's going to be the eighth position. The median, sometimes called Q2, um, we don't actually need to work that one out. But if we do need to work it out, we know it would be in the 16th position. And the third one would obviously be in the 24th position. So I'm going to work out Q1 first of all. So I'm going to go across from the eighth position. I'm just going to draw a straight line here and then I'm going to look down and see what that comes to. Now, that looks like it's roughly 9.95. So I'm going to just say that that is 9.95. I'll do the median in a second, but because it's just asked me to find the quartiles, I'm going to find the upper quartile, which is the 24th. So because we're trying to find out what's in the 24th position, that's why we're drawing across at the cumulative frequency at 24. So we can find out what is um, at 24 or below. So I'm just going to draw that line down here. Now, if this is 10.15 and this is 10.1, I would say it looks like about 10.13 to me. So I'm going to say this is 10.13. So let's do an estimate for the interquartile range. That would be 10.13 minus 9.95, which is going to be 0 0.18. I'm just going to double check that because my brain's a bit slow today. Yep, we've got the 0 0.18 for the interquartile range. The second thing it wants us to do is to draw a box plot. Now, the best thing about these is that I've actually got exactly the same scale drawn underneath here. And it just means these lines can come straight down and they can go into those particular sections of the box plot. But I have got one of them that I haven't quite found out yet, which was the median, because obviously we're going to need the median when we do a box plot here. So I'm going to draw across at 16 until I get to the black line and then I'm going to shoot down here. So actually, if we were going to do an estimate of that, I would say that's probably uh, probably about 10.05 or 06, maybe 07, but something roughly like this. So now if I want to draw these, they're already lined up and in place. So I can for the lower quartile, I can just draw a line exactly in the same place. The median, I can draw a line exactly in the same place and the same for the upper quartile that I've got there. I'm just going to join that up like a box here. 
and then I'm going to say what the upper and lower values are. Now, we don't know if it goes all the way up to 32, but we would presume that it does. Sorry, not 32. We don't know if it goes all the way up to 10.2, but we're going to presume that it does. So I'm going to do my maximum line at 10.2. And we're going to also presume that the lower boundary is 9.6 that we've got there. And then I'm just going to join this together to make a box plot. So you can see why linear interpolation isn't needed here, because this process of, say, finding the 24th term, it's inside this group between 10.05 and 10.2. And when you do linear interpolation, you would come up with a value that is about 10.13. But this geometric, this um, graphical method that we're doing here is the thing that allows you to find that. So we've done question one. We've estimated the quartiles and the interquartile range, and we've drawn the box plot here. Something that's quite interesting to see is this group has got a big jump up in it. And you can see in this section, that's what's meant that this bit is kind of a bit more narrow in this bit because there's more frequency sort of in that in that dense group there. OK, let's have a look at question three. It says estimate how many runners had a time less than 10.15 seconds. So this time I'll use a slightly different colour here. We're going to see how we can interpret the um, the cumulative frequency diagram. So let's have a look at 10.15 seconds on the bottom part, which is going to be just about here. And I'm going to draw a line up from 10.15 until we get to the black line. That's a little bit wonky, so I'm going to do it this way here. Hopefully it will be a little bit better. Let's see if I can just move that across. OK, that's better. And then as I draw across here, you will see that the cumulative frequency, even though that is a terrible wonky line I've just drawn, the cumulative frequency is coming across at 26. So this means that there were 26 people who had a time that was less than 10.15 seconds. So for 3a, less than 10.15 seconds, we're saying that there are 26 people or 26 items, whatever it might be. Now we want more than 9.95. Remember, the cumulative frequency always tells you the value up to that particular time. So let's find out how many of them had less than 9.95 seconds and then use some reasoning there. So let's find out at 9.95 seconds. Here is 9.9. .9. So 9.95 has actually already really been drawn on and it comes across at 8. So 8 people had up to 9.95 seconds. So if we want more than 9.95 seconds, more than 9.95 seconds, well, there are 32 people in to total and eight of them were less than 9.95. So I think that means that there are 24 people who are more than 9.95. Now, If we want to do between 9.8 and 10 seconds that we've got here, we can have a look up at 9.8 and at 10. So 9.8 hits about here, which I would say is a three. And 10 seconds is here which I would say is probably it's probably a bit closer to 11. So let's just add some of those times when we've got here. We've got three and we've got 11. So I think you can see that the in between in between 9.8 and 10 seconds will be the difference between 11 and three. So that was 3B and this is 3B at uh, 3C. So between 9.8 seconds and 10 seconds. It's just going to be the difference between that 11 and 3, which is going to be eight items. So that's all you really need to know how to do um, a cumulative frequency diagram. The best thing about this is you can use the diagram to really quickly draw a um, box plot because those quartiles and medians go straight down onto another version of the graph that you've got there. OK, so that should be enough help now for you to practice exercise 3C.